What's going on, sports card hobby family? Another day, another sports card video. A few days ago, we did our first live reaction watching a sports card radio video, and I did get quite a few comments that were like, hey, keep doing these. This is pretty cool. I had never done one quite like that before. And so we're going to follow up today with another one of these types of videos. We're going to watch a chasing cardboard episode that I have not seen before. And this one was brought to my attention actually by a viewer in particular. It was an episode that they did seven or eight months back. And the viewer said, hey, you should watch this because there is a, a collection that's owned by a neurodiverse guy. And, you know, my son, my youngest son is nine years old and he is autistic. I've talked about this on the channel before and how he helps me with card stuff. He's moving from Pokemon to football cards and he's brilliant. The kid is absolutely amazing. I call him Professor X because his brain is huge. And so I thought if we're going to do a live reaction to one of these videos for Chasing Cardboard, it should probably be this episode. Before I dive in, though, we've got to thank today's video sponsor, Pristine Auction. Pristine Auction does daily auctions. They do 10-minute auctions. They've got live selling on the platform. I actually just bought for my sister-in-law, her one-year-old, well, he's about to turn one, a Wayne Rooney signed jersey from Pristine. And I also picked up for myself an Arnold Schwarzenegger, kind of a mini movie poster that's signed by Arnold. Get to the chopper! And so they've got sports cards, of course. They've got sports memorabilia. They've got pop culture. If you use sports card dad code on Pristine Auction, you'll get $10 off your first auction win. So definitely check them out. Okay, and for this video too, Chasing Cardboard, they're usually 25, 30 minute videos. So what I'm actually gonna do, if there is some kind of B-roll or stuff that might not be as needed in, in the story, I might chop out some of that just to bring it down a little bit so it's this isn't a 30, 35 minute video. We'll see how it goes though. All right, Frank, let's flip it around. All right, it looks like we are good to go. So let's fire up Chasing Cardboard titled, We Find $11,000 Collection in a Circus. All right, here we go. In today's episode of Chasing Cardboard, we find ourselves in Peru, Indiana. But with yeah, a surprising the twist, you see, we're heading to see a collection all the, sitting in. This is already, it's funny. This Chasing Cardboard episode in the first nine seconds might have more quick edits in the intro than I have in an entire video sometimes, which again plays into the production value of this channel. Now, I'll have some critiques, I'm sure, as we kind of go through here, but from a production value standpoint, there is absolutely, I mean, like it's top notch, you know, same with, you know, sports card investor, Jeff Wilson, and even smaller channels can really nail this too. If you have this background, I unfortunately do not, but all right, let's keep it rolling. Side of a circus, but not just any circus. Okay. So grab your popcorn and peanuts and join us on our quest. A little cheesy. A little cheesy with the grab the popcorn and peanuts, but I understand what he was. I understand what Ty was doing there. It's just part of the setup. So we are almost to Peru, Indiana. Circus capital Indiana. of the world. We're meeting. Circus capital of the world. I actually lived in Sarasota, Florida, where Ringling Brothers had originally set up. So I do understand a little bit of the circus town type mentality. It's very cool. A, a young dude named Mikey who reached out Mikey. to us probably four months ago and uh, is looking to sell some of his vintage and modern in order to buy some holy grail cards that he wants for his collection. Yeah. Set the stage here already in the first minute, you know exactly what this video is going to be about. They set the stage. Again, a lot of B-roll type stuff. I might, if you're seeing some of this get cut or like some edits, it's only because I don't want the video to be 40 minutes long. Hey, Mikey. Hey, we are 23 minutes away. We hit a lot of rain, so okay. we're, we're close. Thank you for letting me know. I was just about to text you. Side entrance of a circus. We're checking all the boxes right now. Do you knock? So we're here in Peru, Indiana birthplace of the circus. I mean, everything kind of lives and breathes the circus in this city. 
there's something about just old time Americana where the circus, it, it's a cool part of American history. You got to appreciate it. What's up? Nice Good to meet, meet you. you. You too. This is, this is your home? Uh, no, <laughs> no, it's definitely not. It's too cold in here to be my home. But well, this thanks is for having This us, is man. the pre amateur circuit. Very literal in his responses. This building, Whoa. and it happens in third week of July. Okay. During the summer for one week, and um, kids under 18 perform different acts. Circus capital of the world. Yes. It's stupid. I mean, tons of people come like here. Barter, yeah, Barnum and Bailey started it Barnum in the 1920s. Bailey. This is known as the Circus Capital World because of all the um, famous people that okay. happened to perform here before well, I was a kid's show. Amazing. Well, I want to. Can you give us a tour? I want to yes. see your cards, obviously, okay. but I want to see this too. Yeah, I'll give you a tour. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Cool. Mikey seems like a cool dude. Stuff, man. Just the auditorium? Yeah, uh, auditorium? this is the uh, arena. So this is where um, the acts happen okay. and the whole show is performed. So That's crazy. crazy. So it probably seats what? A couple hundred people? Uh, uh, probably. I think the record is like a thousand people. Wow. Because like all these benches um, pull out and then those pull out too. Can you do any of the acts? No, I definitely <laughs> can't. You can't do I, like a flip right here for me? No, I'm definitely not that athletic. <laughs> Spectacular. This is a perfect time to mention that there are actually some pretty sweet looking vintage circus carts. I don't own any, but I do. All right. So SGC plug, shout out to SGC. And also I like too that, you know, I know it's sports card channel, but the non-sports entertainment cards have picked up a lot of steam here just in, in more people realizing that they're out there even, I mean, vintage, Sports card collectors, I think if they looked more kind of on the, you know, the vintage entertainment cards and non-sports stuff, there is a sea of really interesting cards and they are a fraction of the cost of sports cards, you know. So if it's, if it's not your thing, totally fine, but a lot of people just aren't aware of them. So I'm glad that they're bringing this up as part of the, the circus show. I did a quick search on eBay and I found quite a few that I like and they look really good and they're SGC tuxedos. I mean, come on. Even clowns and elephants appreciate SGC's fast turnaround and amazing customer service. I agree with Ty, but a little cheesy. The, the delivery is a little bit cheesy, Ty, but he knows that. That's just part of the, I think that's part of the shtick. Back to the show. You got to love all the vintage circus stuff very very interesting so why didn't you get involved in the circus um because i was afraid of the crowds because of so many people mm. and my autism so i just like volunteered at the guess okay so right here he does he does bring up uh mikey uh being autistic so okay so establish that in the episode fashion stand and so okay then these are some of the nice clowns oh i'll see that's cool it is Pet so, lines. so cute it's a little baby <laughs> baby tiger these are the photos of the different classes of performers so many kids we'll give props here uh to the chasing cardboard folks for you know bringing this episode it's it's not common um to kind of shed a light especially a collector that is you know neurodiverse so straight away they kind of got me on this one uh because like i said at the beginning of the episode this is um close to my heart to modern day, so it goes by year by year by year by year. Little critique here, but I feel like this is dragging a little bit as far as just the setting the stage for the circus. It, I understand it's kind of an education into just circus cards and you know the circus in general and kind of just the background of the collector and that sort of thing. However, you know I don't know if this keeps the attention of the audience that came here specifically for the card collection part. And then there's going to be some that just totally disagree that just enjoy the fact that they are doing this setup. I like the setup to kind of lead in on, you know, the collector and the person. But for some people, they might be like, OK, you know, I'm ready to get to what, what does this guy have? They're all stacking up. 
So here's my cards, Ty. And I've noticed that you are really enjoying them. So, yeah. And I haven't even looked at them yet. I know. Like, look at this. A satchel page, 1953, top Sharky. Whoop! Right out of the gate. Pull. <laughs> All right, so he's got some heat. Mikey's got some heat. <laughs> okay, so before I dig into any of these, why are you selling cards? Well, because um, I think that it's time to move off these to get my dream card. Okay, he's about to announce his dream card. Right out of the gate, I think you have to be impressed with a young person that has a Satchel Page rookie card. And I'm not saying that everyone you know, has to collect vintage cards. I do like the idea, myself included. I've got all sorts of different things, modern, ultra modern, and, and I've got vintage. But I think it's important to have, have some of that stuff. And so that, that's really cool that he's got a Satchel Page rookie card. Let's see what else he's got. He's about to announce his dream card. Let's hear it. Which is the 1951 Bowman Mantle. Yes. Okay. Whoa. The 1951 Bowman Mantle Rookie. That's a beast of a card. That's such a cool card. All right. You want to take all this and put yes. it into the, a really big I've card. I followed your advice and Mike's advice. Consolidating. Mike wanted, yes, consolidating into Okay, so that's Mike. I'm, I, I'm assuming he's talking about Mike Baseball Collector, who also works with Ty on some of these episodes as well. One big card. Just an awesome down to earth 22 year old guy. 22 year old. <laughs> it's got a, a, what looks to be probably a pretty good vintage card collection. Guy who loves collecting. And he said, Hey, I want to consolidate my collection based on some of the advice from other people you've had on your channel. And can you, can you help me do that? And consolidation is something that we see quite a bit in the hobby. I think that we, myself included, you buy certain cards and then man there's a big card and you're like God, I, but i can never afford it but then you realize that because you've been collecting all along you do have the ability to get into that card okay let's keep going and so we're here today to look at his collection that he's built so that he can go get into a couple really nice high-end vintage cards well i mean you have big cards here yeah and you've sent some pictures so i know you have some big cards yes why the 51 mantle well because i it's this true rookie mm. it really annoys me when people say the 52 tops is rookie okay let's settle this argument once and for all if you think the 1951 bowman mantle is his real rookie smash that like button one time okay nicely done ty wraps in so let's spur on some engagement during the episode with kind of a poll, but using the like button to do so. If you think the 1952 Tops Mantle is true, Rookie, smash that like button three times. And as a <laughs> thanks for doing that, I'm going to show you a sneak peek at our new chasing car. No, limited edition merch. Hey, I can't bust on them too badly. I've got all the affiliates and all the different things, but I think that's funny. Limited edition hats. Something tells me that if they were selling those like gangbusters, they wouldn't be that limited. They would order as many as needed. It's probably limited edition for now because they're not going to order 10,000 of them and then have them sitting around their house. Cardboard hats. And um, I think that Mantle has definitely room to grow compared to the price of the 52 Tops. Uh, 52 tops. So he makes an interesting point, and there's been a lot of discussion about that. So much money, resources put into the iconic 52 Tops card. Beautiful card. But why does that 51 Bowman lag behind so much? I actually think since this episode came out that the 51 Bowman has kind of moved up. It's, it's probably never going to be the price of a 52 Tops, but the 51 Bowman is not inexpensive. Mantle, so I think it has is been... Mike Boyhan inside your body? Maybe. I mean, are you the offspring of Mike Morgan? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I'm a little cheesy, a little cheese. Passionate about the cards mm -hmm. because they um, bring me happiness. Mm -hmm. Like in high school, I was bullied and stuff, and growing up as well in elementary school. Mm -hmm. So when I went, got home, all I would want to do is look at cards. So. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's like, I'm so grateful that my parents like support my collection and everything. In the spring, I bought um, a Kenny Pickett rookie, Blue Shimmer out of 25, and it um, was like $800. And um, did, I. Did you borrow the money? Yes, I borrowed the money. Uh oh, borrowed the money for a Kenny Pickett rookie card. 
the the comment section is going to come for you on that one. Okay. And my dad, because he's definitely supports my card collection. I just sent it off the grade and I got a PSA 10. Then my, at my first national last, like in this previous summer in Chicago, I traded that for my T206 Chrissy Matthewson in SGC. Whoop! <laughs> so. Traded a Kenny Pickett, the 22 year old, traded a Kenny Pickett. For a wicked pre-war card. Genius. Yeah, that's why I didn't want to get rid of it because I've always wanted that card and I knew I couldn't that's get it awesome. back. So good yeah. for you. Yeah. It, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Definitely. That was a perfect. It trade. was a perfect time because no his kidding. market tanked after. So maybe there are some young people that are moving out of ultra modern, the speculative QBs, into Christy Matthewson cards. The season started because he was playing not yeah. very good. So, so you, you got to pay your dad back a thousand ish. Yeah, nine thousand to work with. What are you doing with that? You buying? I'm, buy, I'm, I'm buying a 1951 uh, Mansell <laughs> PSA one. So, his okay. true rookie, by the way, his true rookie. You're gonna keep reminding us of that. I, I like yeah. it. Uh, so, tell me a little bit about. You mentioned autism. Yes. How does that play into the way you collect? Um. So I would say that the um organization mm -hmm. definitely plays into it because okay. i because everything has its place um in it and um, i can relate to this with with my youngest um i also like going to car shows but the anxiety of it mm -hmm. um definitely overwhelms me with a whole bunch of people yeah so I yeah and so for this my experience has just been with my youngest son so much stimulation and catching all the sounds all the conversations and so it's just just takes a lot of energy to be at a card show for a long period of time i'd rather buy on ebay um yeah. i'm not big into auction houses just because you have okay. to like apply and get approved before you can bid and yeah. stuff so ebay is definitely my number one and almost solely um place to buy cards so you, a lot of this has been acquired through eBay. Yes. Okay. Over like, so what I've done is this is my collection I'm selling, but through the years I've traded and sold a whole bunch of smaller cards okay. and bigger cards to buy these. So then I'm trading these for a mantle. So you never know where I might do next, <laughs> but, um, well, you can't go up too much higher until yeah. you're in the really upper tier. Definitely. Um, Autism well, definitely helps me with that, and it brings me happiness because. It Keep this in mind when we talk about you know flippers and oh man the dirty flippers out there flippers flippers this flippers that. Mikey's flipping cards into vintage grails. If I'm sad or if I have a bad day from my autism and anxiety and stuff, I can just come home, look at my cards, and they just bring me like a smile to my face. So. Hmm. Yeah, and I know like that's probably a sign of a true collector. I is so. like that that fact that they bring you happiness, and mm -hmm. it's not for me. It's not about the monetary value as much as the happiness they bring me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably understated part of the hobby. Of course, pricing matters when you're trying to move in and out of cards and and all of that. But there's a, a wellness part of of collecting cards um and and all all a variety of different parts making content flipping cards there's kind of a uh, a dopamine rush you know that comes from that and a happiness factor from mikey organizing cards you know and so forth because like yeah they're cardboard but they're still like the history mm -hmm. really attaches atta you're attached to the history yeah yeah because like i like learning about the old players and everything like that so i love it well you, you don't seem you don't seem to shy away from mentioning that you have autism it's it definitely um took me a long time to okay. do that because um growing up i was really ashamed that i had mm -hmm. autism but which sucks but, um it's um, you've matured yeah you've matured become, yeah yeah i've i've come to accept it mm -hmm. and do the best that i can and of course medicine helps I um, mm. still have my bad days, but definitely cards help too with that. So like, it's, yeah. Well, that's amazing. It's, it's encouragement for people that are going to watch this and are going to see like, you're just bold. Yeah. You're just, you're willing to say, you know what, this is what I have and I am who I am. Definitely. And that's.
Yeah, and this is what you want, you know, when you have, you know, a young person that's, that's you know, in this position. I hope that, you know, mine grows up and is confident and, and able to, you know, have the guts to, you know, build out a card collection and look to, you know, get into a grail card. I think it's fantastic. That's, so, it's pretty amazing. I, I love the way you carry yourself. Thank the confidence you. you have. Thank you. Mikey is very open about his autism, something that I'm just, I admire a lot. He, he's matured in the way he, he's handled the autism and he understands that's how he was made and he's not shying away from it. I have a lot of respect for the way Mikey's carrying himself. Yeah, the thing to understand is, is that, you know, for a lot of neurodiverse folks, they just look at the world in a different, in a different way. And it's not about them needing to conform to the world. The world needs to also conform, you know, to, to them and the way that they think because they are brilliant thinkers. Why don't you walk me through the collection? Give me the, the high level tour and then I'm going to look in and okay. see what we got. So here. Brag about whatever you want to brag okay. about. Okay. So here's my satchel page in a 1.5. It's really beautiful, even though it's off center. Okay. Um, here's my uh, Willie Mays that I got at the national, my first national last oh, year. In your <laughs> obviously it's a one, so you can see it's got some surface stuff. But damn, that is such a great card. It's a fifty-three tops Mays, the portrait uh, for that card. Just because again, they're not using they're not using pictures. They're not using photos. These are artists that, that made these cards selling all these just so yes, we're aware. Okay. definitely selling them okay i'll buy them back later on ebay but for right now i'm selling them <laughs> uh here's my jackie 53 oh, yeah. and a bvg 1.5 okay uh he's got some heat for sure 54 mantle. bowman mantle that's my only mantle for now okay <laughs> so then my kofax rookie that i've yeah. had since high school what yeah did you get this graded yourself? Or you no, graded? I bought it graded. Okay. So he bought it graded in high school. She traded that some big, <laughs> small cards for those. Way ahead of his time. Just for um, that uh, Kofax buy um, from Indie Card Exchange. Okay. I got it from Which Andy. is a great, great card shop. Yeah. Um, so tell me then about the collecting community. And as a high schooler, did you feel like you were connected with other high schoolers through um, collecting? or were you So I didn't school? really like. I uh, talked to many people, but the, mainly the people that I did talk to on my sports sports teams, they okay. didn't really collect. Like they didn't really think that it was a fun thing to do. So I didn't really know people growing up that also collected until I found YouTube. <laughs> so you can see by his collection, he he just doesn't mess around with a lot of junk. He but what's what's wild too about this is typically when you think of young people. And my God, the way that the hobby is now, it's all about, you know, a repack or a break or some other, uh, some other thing, you know, I mean, this dude, he doesn't, a high school collector, I would think would have more of like the Mike Trouts, the Shohei's, the, the newer players. The fact that he's got these <laughs> vintage legends is unbelievable, but also probably makes it tougher again to, you know, find other people his age with these sorts of cards. He knows exactly what he wants to go buy. Even some of his stories about, hey, I bought this Kenny Pickett and I sold it to get this, you know, Christy Matthewson, or I bought this section of cards or this box of cards and I sold it to get this next vintage card. He's very methodical and strategic about the way he's building his collection. So he was not expecting this, you know, was not expecting it. Actually, you know, just his age, you automatically think it's a heavy modern, ultra modern collection. You, you looks like you, you gravitate towards autos and um, and refractors and parallels. Yeah. Is that your style? Yes. Okay. Um, because they're more rare. Yeah. Here's my Bowman Chrome. I mean, focusing around rarity and scarcity. Got to love that. Manning rookie, um, SPX, um, Bowman's mm -hmm. best score. Okay. I'm also a huge Jeter fan. So okay. here's a story. Um, I met. While you're doing that, I'm gonna keep looking. Okay. Keep so, I, so I met um, Derek Jeter once at Yankee Stadium because in Pay Manning. Okay. I um, because I got surprised for my 12th birthday. We have a me and greet with Jeter. My dad paid for it because. Shout out to this this guy's dad, man. I mean, he lent the money for the Kenny Pickett card, which was, I think it was like a thousand bucks, which he then turned into a T206 card. 
and then hooked him up with a, a Derek Jeter meet and greet. I mean, got to love it. Because they were running a promotion with, um, what's the organization called? Make a Wish, whatever. Okay. Yeah. So I met Derek Jeter. But yeah, my favorite three athletes of all time is Payne Manning one, Derek Jeter two, and Bill Russell three. Man, if he had said Drew Brees, he would have been my favorite guy. Favorite. But he went with Man Manning also. Also great. By Bill Russell. I think he's the GOAT besides Wilt Chamberlain. <laughs> and you cannot convince me otherwise because um, I think that he dominated the sport and he transcended the sport in terms of like his civil rights like actions and stuff like that. Okay. So. Bill Russell is the greatest of all time. That's it. Bill Russell. Ty coming in hard with the inflection in the voice. Bill Russell. A bold statement. But he did win an NBA record 11 championships. Yeah. He captured the MVP award five times, and he averaged 22 and a half rebounds per game throughout his entire career. I think Michael Jordan has a few things to say about who's the actual good. I think the trouble that Wild and Bill run into, and of course, massive accomplishments. Um, but I think it's you know the the throwback, or I think you know it's going to be, and again, it's era specific. They can't help this; they can only play against their level of competition. But I think that the knock on you know Bill and Wild is they were just way ahead of their time during a time when the league just wasn't anywhere near as competitive as to what it is today, or in the eighties, nineties, when MJ and a lot of these other guys were playing. But Obviously, shout out to to Bill. Goat, but those stats are pretty impressive. Oh, I went to Indiana State, so that's one of the reasons I bought that is because Larry Bird is really big down there. Yeah, that's a cool card. The green ink is so cool. It really is. That's what drew me to it was the green ink. That's a sweet card. Oh, hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, look, before we buy this collection, I want to let you in on a little secret. You see, during this episode and the next few episodes, we're going to... Here we go. Here we go. Buttering us up. We're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be making all of the cards that you see that we purchase available to you. And we're going to be partnering with Whatnot and using their amazing platform to host these live events. Okay. I can respect it. I can respect it. I'll probably clip out the rest of this because I think we get the gist. It's just a Whatnot ad. Hey, I get, I get it. Pristine auction. Check them out. Sports card dad code. $10 off your first auction win. I get it. That's, it's going to be pretty amazing. We're pretty excited to give you the opportunity. Yep. And I actually pulled that out of a 89 flare box sealed, got it graded, and got a 10. That's so. He's got a lot of cool, just different things. Crazy. Yeah. So different eras as well. So that was just, these are so hard. People don't know this, but these are so hard to grade because the centering is usually never off. Yeah. It's always Well, I, I should pull two. Too. I pulled two from two boxes. I had two boxes of 89 flare. I pulled two FF airs. That's and one, crazy. And one got a 10, this one, and then one got a 9, which I traded for part of the mantle earlier. So, so you, this is early print run. One of the first print runs of this, of the 89 flare had the, the curse word on it, the FF air and then they pulled it off the print yeah line. and then they did and like the white box it. and the black box yep. and then try to clear it out and look like a normal bat there's like five or six different variations air cards in the junk wax era became something of a lifeline for the hobby because so many cards were being overprinted during the yeah that that was a differentiator back in the junk wax era it was error cards mm -hmm. because there was no parallels there wasn't autographs or very 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 few in the early 90s and so, yeah, this is true where it was like, oh, this people paying a premium on an error card, like the with the, the no name Frank Thomas, you know, rookie card on the nameplate type thing. In that period, the manufacturers decided to purposely put in error cards so we could still have a chase card to hunt down. This gimmick can be seen as giving birth to short printed cards that we're used to today. Yeah, and they're there equally is. as popular because as collectors, we love our scarcity product then. Um, yes, know. I've so I have my own eBay store and I um, it's called Mikey's Sports Cards LLC. Put the link in the show notes. Yeah. All right, Mikey's Sports Cards LLC on eBay for this guy's stuff. In your store. Please do that and definitely follow me. I am listing a whole bunch of stuff now. So it seems like you gravitate towards baseball. Um, I think it's mostly football. That's out of fifty. That's sweet. Yeah, I pulled that myself. That's a second year. That's a rookie. That's a rookie. That's yeah, that one is sharp. It's yeah. off center, but yeah, that's nice. Yeah. 
Mike, he's selling it. He's selling it. I just didn't want to pay like the $30 to get it graded from my <laughs> PSA. So tell me about your influencers in the hobby. You've mentioned oh, some to me yes. offline. Who, who's really so, influenced you? So um, I <laughs> would say definitely Mike Moynihan. Okay. Um, he we can has... cut that out. <laughs> yeah, cut that. Sports car dad, is he going to say it? <laughs> Sports um, car dad? So yeah, uh, Mike Moynihan has his podcast. Um, uh, what's this called? Uh, Gordon Asia Cardboard mm -hmm. and John Keating on there. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I'm going to assume that, that he's going to say vintage vintage card probably mostly vintage baseball card folks and um uh you i love watching mike on um, the fly with mike and ty oh cool thank you um so because... do you like uh bo yes bo yeah. okay yeah. i like bo because he's taught me so much about my ebay store oh because my autism i struggle like having a full-time job okay and being passionate about it with the job i have now so... that's one thing that does bother me that I hope to, um, you know, affect change as far as the, the underemployment for a lot of neurodiverse folks. That's always top of mind. Uh, when I think about my youngest as well, brilliant people, highly, um, highly qualified in many instances and, you know, just need a little bit of assistance on, on that front. So hopefully next year I can have my eBay still grow and um, do that full time, just like you. And that's what I admire about you is you took that leap hmm. to do full cards full time. And that's what I want to do. So, yeah. So what do you, uh, tell me about your, your strategy there with the eBay side. So yeah. I'm basically trying to do the Bo model. Okay. So Bo Thompson, he's like, what who I learned a lot from, from e for eBay. Mm -hmm. um, he does low volume uh, priced cards. Hmm. No, low, low price, high volume. High volume. Yep. Yep. And I want to imitate that. And I've already sold a lot of cards. Like I've. That is also the Chris baseball card collector, investor, dealer model as well. He does sell some higher end, but for the most car part, he's just selling a lot of volume. I'll tell you about off camera, but so you're you're scanning with the Fujitsu 8130 or 8170? 8170. So you got a nice scanner. Are you using like Card Dealer Pro or anything? Yes, you, I love Card Dealer. Yeah, you're using Card Dealer Pro. The only complaint about Card Dealer Pro mm -hmm. is that it doesn't recognize some newer sets when yeah. it first releases. It, it's so I have to go in and manually enter the details, but it's faster to list to eBay because all you have to do is go to the upload to hit bulk. Yeah, and it just creates the listings for you. So that's how I was able to grow to. I think I have like four thousand six hundred list cards list. Wow. Right now. Good for you, man. Yeah. So my goal is to like dig it to six thousand by the end of the year. Okay. I wonder where he's at. I need to check out it's Mikey. I think he said it's Mikey Sports Cards on eBay. He had forty six hundred listings, wants to get to six thousand by the end of twenty twenty four. Or wait, but he but they made this seven or eight months ago. So maybe he meant at the end of twenty twenty three. I wonder where he's at now. We'll have to check that out. If you're watching this episode, Mikey Sports Cards on eBay. And actually, uh, Ty had said that in the video description, he was going to put a link to the eBay store. So definitely check out Mikey's store. Okay. 5,000, 6,000, and then grow that in the next coming year. So hopefully I get to Bo's level. But There's no not. way you're going to get to 6,000 because you're going to have so many people from the show come buy your stuff oh. and prevent you from getting there. I really appreciate that. <laughs> What are some of the things that you've done to keep growing the store? So what I've done is I've bought new product okay. on Blowout and I've ripped it. Mm. And then I've sold everything in the boxes, but the key to my growth, because I have 72 followers right now, okay. is I've um, just tried to do great customer service and ship in one day mm -hmm. and um, have low prices. So. I try to have only a small margin on mm -hmm. my cards and price them either at like a dollar fifty to like two fifty, okay. depending on what card it is. Now the higher end stuff, it's of course gonna be higher. Yeah. But most of my store is in that range okay. and that's really helped drive sales. So I'm averaging about like twenty five cards a day of sales. Yes. So that's not too bad. That's great, man. I know Bo does like three hundred, but um something to aspire to. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Twenty five is great. How yeah. how many do you do? Uh, 
there is, uh, I think that there's money to be made if you are going to do the, the low end volume stuff. It's just a matter of putting the work in. I, it, I think for my, I wonder if Mikey is buying collections now, how he's kind of getting inventory to be able to keep the store going. Cause that's what, like I mentioned, Chris, baseball card collector, investor, dealer, through his channel, he's able to get quite a few referrals. He buys collections. He pays, he pays well. He pays strong for collections. And I'm sure that Mikey probably would as well. Uh, we're probably about 125 a day. Okay, yeah. so I'm not too far off. Yeah, I only have to. You're, like, you're gonna blow past me. Before we try and jump in and negotiate Mikey's collection, we've been hard at work designing a few incredible courses for all of you. As Ty's got courses too. Firing resellers. If you want to learn more about the ins and outs of reselling and the nuances of eBay, come check out Uncommon Reseller. You'll find the links right here or down in the show notes. What? He's got a lot of plugs in here over a 28 minute video, but he does them. They transition in well and they're not very long. So, and again, the production value is there. So props, props for the production value. Uh, what have you learned from an organizational side? A lot of people struggle with that. They get stuff listed and then all of a sudden it's a mess in the back. Yeah. You don't seem like you struggle with organization. No, I definitely <laughs> don't. So I, so I remodeled my room just okay. so it fit my card business better. Dang. That's pretty damn cool. Look at all the sports memorabilia there. I see a uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's signed. Jersey. Peyton Manning signed jersey. Signed helmets, footballs. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I've learned that I'm doing the SKU system now. Okay. So I don't have to, because it was fast. It was sl really slow trying to go to that box of football and then try to find the card in there mm. instead of just doing the SKU on eBay and Cardio Pro. I recommend having a, um, a thermal label printer. Mm. That's definitely sounds. This guy's advanced. I mean, I know he's 22. He's an adult, but man, he's way ahead of where I was at, at 22 as far as any sort of a business mind this is this is a uh, it's impressive that definitely saves a lot of time mm -hmm. doing that um instead of like cutting out the pieces of paper remember when you did the ebay live stream and oh, yeah. you said that it was faster that's what motivated me to yeah. get the a thermal label which it's a game changer yeah so I think it's smart too, whether you like Ty or agree with Ty's strategies for eBay. But regardless, I like that Mikey is looking for kind of mentors and you know people that have been doing it for a while. Ty has been doing it for a while. So smart to kind of look at what other people are doing, taking ideas and looking to replicate success. So tell me why you think 10 grand is a good price. Well, because I priced them out and the collection goes for 14. Okay. And I did the math, and that's about 60 to 70 percent, I believe. I forget which one, but. In today's world with repackers, and no offense to the guys out buying collections, because I think 60, 65 percent is really fair for, you know, I mean, the, everyone has to make, there has to be a little bit of money on the back end because Ty is going to piece it out. He's going to grade some of it. There's time and effort and money that goes into all of that stuff. Now in the world of repacks, hell, maybe Mikey could have gotten 14K. Who knows? But, um, but yeah, anyway, let's keep going. I think that these will get you close to 10 alone because this is like a 900 to 1,000. Go this, back to the three? Yes. I paid 650 for that, and that was a bargain because they go for around 800. And then this one's about 650, 550-ish. So here's a question that, that everyone's going to ask. Well, why not sell it in your own eBay store? Okay, so I do not have the self-control to, when that money hits my account or my eBay balance, I will want to spend it on something else. So <laughs> it's probably my autism. I have, like, I get it from my mom. She has, like, spending problems. Like, she likes to buy stuff, and I do too. It's just different. She likes buying clothes and uh, Tupperware and stuff. I like buying sports cards. So, so if it hits you, if you sell this methodically on eBay, yeah, you're afraid not, you'll I'll, spend it before you like, save up for yeah. your rental. I think that's a problem for everybody. I mean, I can say for myself too, you know, you, you have this idea of I'm going to sell these 50 cards, these 80 cards, get into a larger card, but you're also on eBay, you're looking, you see other things. And I, I can totally relate to this where you end up just buying other things instead of getting into that, that larger thing. It takes a lot of discipline to consolidate up uh, into that card, but he said that's his dream card, that fifty-one Bowman, and that's a hell of a card. It will not; it will just disappear, and I'll get like nothing. I won't get the mantle because stuff won't sell all at once. 
So I would say, oh, I'll just go to Walmart. I go to Walmart and then, oh, there's like Prison Draft Blaster. I, I have the edge to rip. Let me buy that with that money. And then I end up not getting the mantle. <laughs> so I'd rather just sell everything now and then to you because I trust you. And I want you to sell everything all at once and then use that money to buy the mantle before um, interest disappears. You know how this goes. I would normally negotiate, but with you, I will do $10,000. Really? Absolutely. Thank you. 10,000 bucks, man. Thank you. Okay. So, <laughs> so I kind of have mixed, I have a kind of a mixed thought on this. Um, so yes, he didn't negotiate, but I almost feel like Mikey kind of gave him a great, a, a good deal. If it's, if it's valued at 14 or 15. And again, I don't have the numbers. This is a TV show. So I'm, I'm just going off of kind of what they're talking about. 10,000, if that's at 60 to 65%, I don't know. It could, it would have been really cool if Ty had gone above and beyond and given 11 or 12, you know, and I look, I understand he's running a business. He's got all sorts of expenses. So this is not a knock. I'm thank God. I, I'm really happy that he didn't say, I'll give you eight or I'll give you six or I'll give you five or something. But I also don't think that would have been smart when you're putting you know everything on a TV show like this. And so I, I almost feel like he needed to give 10, at least 10. Very happy that he did do that though. Took care. And and look, he this episode has been run very well. So I'm glad the viewer that had reached out to me, um, you know, shared it. I, I really appreciated this this episode. This was cool. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you bringing us out to see this. I want to support you. Get it. You got to get your, well, you don't have to get it. Okay. But I hope you get your 51. I'll, I'll it, wait it. When you do. No, don't okay. do that. <laughs> I'm excited to support you in the way I think you want to grow your hobby love, man. That's, yeah, that's a really neat you. thing. And uh, you've curated a really cool collection here that I. And maybe, I don't know if he could have assisted to get that mantle so that he wouldn't have the, you know, if Ty's going to give him 10,000, could he have worked out something? Ty knows people. Ty can get a, a, a 51 mantle and a one. That would have been cool too, to say, Hey, you know, I can help you get that card. Let's look, let's, let's do it. And I understand it's, it's time, it's effort, but for me, obviously, you know, I've got a soft spot, you know, for, um, you know, for autistic folks and just neurodiverse in general. That would have been cool if he could have maybe, because look, you, you know, this this guy, obviously, he looks up to Ty, he looks up to Mike Moynihan, and, um, you know, so anyway, just kind of going above and beyond, um, you know, would, would have been really cool. But again, I, I think he did the right thing and the numbers are fine, uh, but I don't know. For me, it's a little bit more personal. Uh, because of my situation. I think the audience will want to buy a lot of this stuff yeah. because it came from you. Oh, thank you. I really, I really that. appreciate that. Awesome, man. Well, I'm super excited. Thank you for letting us come see this world. Of course. And participate in your hobby experience, man. Thank you. Your story is spectacular. Have you checked it out? Your, what's that? Your, no, your story. Your oh, story. Story, story. I yeah, your, story. your story, the, the way you carry yourself. I think it's a uh, it's going to be an encouragement for a lot of people. Thank and you. so, yeah. I'm glad that you guys came. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Larry Bird's signed card is really cool. Larry Bird's got a, a great autograph. What a special day. I mean, hitting the circus was something that we've obviously never done, but being able to spend the time with Mikey, seeing the, the connection, the integration with so many people in the hobby and his story, it's just neat. It's just neat because you realize that the community is huge, but it's also really, really small and tight. Uh, so props to Mikey for just being bold in his collecting and who he is and giving us the opportunity to come hang with him. Well, thank you so, so much. Thank Good you. Good to meet you. Me too. I'll you see. can check his eBay store. Mikey uh, Sports Cards LLC. Mikey Sports Cards LLC on eBay. Support Mikey. Yeah. All right, brother. Thank Keep you. Keep grinding, doing your thing. You too. Well, that was a treat. Yeah. So that was a good episode. Again, I'm glad that I was referred that one. That was good. I'll be honest with, with some of this stuff, you know, it's kind of similar to me where it's, you know, making card deals at, at shows for me and my, and what I view, I just kind of, it just gets old for me. You know, I got the card for 200. I sold it for 250. I understand the deal making stuff can be really enjoyable uh, for a lot of people, but it's kind of similar in this way where, buying collections. Sometimes I'm in the mood to watch this sort of thing. And other times I'm, I'm just not. Plus with chasing cardboard, they do such a great job on the visuals. 
that you have to sit and actually you have to watch it, you know, whereas with a lot of uh, other types of content that I, I can just listen to it in the background and that's just more convenient for, for what I'm, for what I'm trying to do. So, um, but this was a very good episode. I hope that Ty and Mike and those guys stay in touch with Mikey and hopefully kind of act as a mentor because it's really, really important for us to uplift you know, these, these folks. All right, guys, let me know in the comments what you thought about this episode and just kind of these reaction videos in general. And also if there's another video or another channel that you would like me to watch, I think this is a, this has been a lot of fun. So thank you again very much uh, for hanging out with me. We'll talk to you later.